The Noctua NH-U12S is a small CPU cooler that promises to deliver a good performance to noise ratio. Also, with a price of around 60 US dollars or euros, it is not exactly expensive for a Noctua cooler, but it is not actually that cheap either. And I'm saying this especially when looking at what other manufacturers are releasing day after day within this price bracket. Now, if you are someone that watches my channel on a regular basis, first of all, thanks. Second of all, you will remember that I did sort of review this cooler before, a few months ago in fact. Well, not exactly. I did review the NH-U12S, but it was the All Black Chromax edition, so technically it is a different cooler with a different price, so just you know, let it go, don't complain and uh, enjoy this review. The NH-U12S has a standard single tower heatsink with a minimalistic design around the metal components of the heatsink. Mind you, this is just a heatsink after all, so not a lot of things you can do about it, to change the overall aesthetic of the cooler, that is, without sacrificing some cooling performance along the way. I am not saying that some manufacturers are willing to sacrifice some performance for the aesthetics on their coolers, what I am saying is that Noctua certainly does not do such things as you can see here. The cooler uses 5 heat pipes made from nickel plated copper. Each heat pipe has an outer diameter of 6mm and all of them are arranged in the traditional U shape to not only provide the best possible heat transfer but also because the 50 or so aluminium fins of the heatsink are attached to all the heat pipes and thus creating the overall shape of the cooler. Other things involving the heat pipes are found at the top. The endings of the heat pipes are machine smooth and have more or less the same shape. I say this because even the best of the best manufacturers sometimes do not really take care of the shape of the endings of the heat pipes in their CPU coolers. This is nothing unusual and has to do with the manufacturing process and the overall costs of each cooler. However, the NH-U12S looks to have evenly made heat pipes and that's really nice, especially since that part of the heatsink is going to be very easy to see by everyone because the cooler is installed in your system and you know because side panels and plenty of RGB everywhere. The base of the cooler is made from nickel plated copper and has a very smooth surface with subtle circular marks present across the plate. As I've said in previous CPU coolers, these marks are left here from the manufacturing process, but they do not affect the thermal compound or the evenness of the spread. The surface of the base plate is also straight and will make a good contact with the surface of the CPU cooler. In addition, the circular marks create a sunburst effect on the base plate of the cooler, so that's, let's just call it, a good side effect of this thing. The fan used with the NH-U12S is the now classic Noctua NF12 PWM model. It has a minimum speed of 300 RPM and a maximum speed of 1500 RPM. However, you can lower that maximum speed to 1200 RPM with the help of the included low noise adapter. Or just use your motherboard and have the software do the work for you through PWM. Other features present on this fan include rubber pads that are already pre-installed on both sides of the fan frame with four additional rubber pads included in the accessory bundle. Also, the cable is on the short side of things, but it is covered by high quality sleeving and has a 4 pin connector for powering the fan. Before we move on with this review, let's see what is delivered with the NH-U12S and the accessories included with this cooler are plentiful. They are also packaged in a dedicated cardboard box which also has diagrams which tells you what you should find in the box but also the number of each piece so losing them or not knowing how many of them you have would be tricky. There are a total of three user manuals, a metallic backplate, a metallic case badge, the before mentioned four rubber pads for the fan, one tube of Noctua NTH1 thermal compound, a low noise adapter, two extra fan clips, a self-adhesive rubber strip for adding an additional fan at the back of the heatsink, and finally, the now characteristic of Noctua, the L-shaped metallic Phillips screwdriver. The installation process is very easy thanks to Noctua's Secure Firm mounting system which has been refined over the years and it is one of my favorites to use today. First, you install the backplate on the back of the motherboard, careful to align the holes with the endings of the screws for the CPU holder. Then you install the plastic spacers, in my case, I have an Intel platform so those are black and smaller in the inner diameter. 
Then you place the Intel brackets over the spacers and screw them in with the four metal nuts. Afterwards, place the heatsink over the CPU cooler and thermal compound and screw the spring-loaded screws on each of the two metallic beams. And now you install the fan over the heatsink and don't forget to connect the fan to a header on your motherboard, preferably the ones located in close proximity with the CPU socket. With the cooler installed, we see the main advantages of this little CPU cooler. First of all, the footprint is very small, the clearance for the RAM slots is very good and the same can be said for the back of the cooler and the VRM heatsinks of the motherboard. Then you have around 35mm of space between the edge of the heatsink and the graphics card. However, this is not the rule because different motherboards have different spacing for the expansion slots in ratio with the CPU socket, so your mileage may vary. And yes, I know that my graphics card has a bit of a sag. Before we get into the thermal performance of the cooler, let's hear how this cooler sounds like with the included fan spinning at a maximum speed of 1500 RPM. While I will include a graph with the noise reading measured in decibels, the sound sample is useful as it will give you a general idea of what to expect from a CPU cooler because from the decibel reading alone, you can really tell if the fan has a high pitch noise or if the bearings are creating additional noise inside your system. The maximum sound reading reached by the Noctua NH-U12S is 39 decibels, with the reading device placed at a standard distance of 10 cm away from the system. And as you can see, or rather hear, the noise reading alone does not really give you the complete picture of this cooler, as the recorded 39 decibels reading in this test does not sound that loud, thanks to the usage of high quality bearings and a good mounting system for the fan on the heatsink surface. In addition, you can drop the noise to around 36-37 decibels if you use the included low noise adapter, but you will sacrifice some performance when doing so. The performance testing is divided into two tests for each CPU cooler. The used CPU is the Intel i9-9900K running both at the factory frequency and also overclocked manually to 5GHz on all cores with a fixed voltage. The first test involves the software Intel BurnTest V2, a benchmark that places a load on the CPU that is at the same level as other CPU loads that you may encounter in the wild. I mean, for example, heavy gaming in a modern AAA video game or video rendering or even some number crunching. And in this test, the NH-U12S reached a maximum temperature of 61 degrees Celsius, with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz and 53 degrees Celsius with the CPU running at its factory settings. A whole degree cooler with the factory settings than the Chromas Black Edition NH-U12S. This difference is so small that we can pass it as a margin of error between these two coolers. However, the real thermal test is next, and it involves the usage of the FPU and CAKE settings within the AIDA64 Extreme System Stability Benchmark. Keep in mind that this test will place an unrealistically high load on the CPU, so high that it will not be encountered in your daily usage. This test serves only one purpose. It is done to separate the performance of each CPU cooler and show which model can perform the best when pushed to its very limits. And in this test, the cooler reached a maximum temperature of 87 degrees Celsius, with the ambient temperature set at 26 degrees Celsius, just like in all other tests. And with the CPU running at its factory settings, the NH-U12S reached a maximum temperature of 61 degrees Celsius, basically running identical with its Chromas Black Edition counterpart. All this being said and shown, is the Noctua NH-U12S still worth buying today? Yes, it is. First of all, the build quality is outstanding and to give you some basis for comparison, it is on the same level as a high-end Noctua NHD15 CPU cooler. The mounting system is very good, it contains only metallic components apart from the plastic spacers and it is solid once installed over your CPU. The actual performance is good for a cooler of this size and for a cooler that has only a single fan included. Yes, you can always increase the performance by adding one additional fan and use the cooler in a push-pull configuration, but that will also increase the overall cost of cooling the CPU. 
The only thing that I have to say is that with the launch of the Chromas Black Edition coolers, the regular variants, especially the NHU12S, are a tough sell for many people, myself included. While the NHD15 has its shape to create the unique design, the NHU12S is not really that easy to distinguish from other CPU coolers found within this price range, because at the end of the day, it is just a single tower heatsink design cooler with a fan attached at the front. It is good, yes, it is identical in performance with the all black Chromas NH-U12S, but if you have the choice of either models, I will always recommend the newer and better looking NH-U12S Chromas Black Edition. If you liked this review, then you can perhaps consider subscribing for more, and if you want to support the channel directly, then you can find in the description below the subscriber star and Patreon pages.